Movies do this thing where they show how someone's feeling by what's going on around them. A bad mood or bad circumstances, classic rain cloud. Or maybe that rain represents something else, a sense of freedom. Stories also set us up for future narrative events, often with a sunset when things are turning ominous. Or maybe we feel that same flicker of hopefulness as a character by experiencing a sunset with them, or the same uncertainty when they turn their back to it. And why is that? What is it about a sunset or a sunrise that inspires anxiety or hope in us? I and mean, that's not how it works in real life. How you're feeling doesn't affect the time of day. Except in the afterlife, that's exactly how it works. So today we're going to go on an inspiring journey to figure out how we make our own spiritual time. So as we were just saying, or as I was just saying in that video that we, you just saw, the world doesn't care how you feel, or the physical reality doesn't respond to thoughts and feelings, to, to what's going on in your consciousness. But there is another world, another layer of reality, which is called the spiritual world. And that world cares a lot about how you feel and what you think. Actually, you, your feelings and thoughts are occurring in that world because your consciousness is spiritual and that world the spiritual world is entirely consciousness based so what's going on in the heart and the minds of the inhabitants of it big deal and this has a huge impact on what it is to be in heaven because heaven is full of people that have died and are now solely conscious of their spirit and they're in a state of love and wisdom that swedenborg calls being an angel What's it like to be an angel? Well, you might think angel just means you're happy all the time. You're, you're in blissful worship of God all the time or, or whatever it is that your tradition teaches. But according to Swedenborg, um, variety is not just the spice of life, but it is a perpetual feature of life. The life of an angel isn't just one constant emotion or one state of mind. They have fluctuations, just like the world around us has fluctuations. Like that we were pointing out there's this day-night cycle that we all go through every 24 hours. Angels have days and evenings inside of them. When things are going well, and yeah, sometimes things are going better for an angel than other times. When they're going really well, it's daytime for them. And when they're going less well, it's evening for them. This is how Swedenborg puts it in Heaven and Hell. Angels are not constantly in the same state as to love... And consequently, they're not in the same state as to wisdom. That's what matters. What's going on? It's not like, oh, you know, how are the Bengals doing? <laughs> Maybe there's a heavenly equivalent. It's how's the love going? How's the wisdom going? Sometimes they are in a state of intense love. Sometimes in a state of love that is not intense. Like it's still love, but it's not as, as you know, it's like, eh. When they are in the highest level of love, they are in the light and warmth of their lives or in their greatest clarity and delight. This is peak angel life. Conversely, when they're in the lowest level, they are in shadow and coolness, or what is dim and unpleasant. From this latter state, they return to the first, and so on. The phases follow each other with constant variety. So kind of like how there's a constant variety from the rotation of the earth, and what that does to the the experience we have of day and night. I will say, in case you're like, oh, being an angel sounds just like a person, and I don't like being a person. <laughs> the, 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 it gets better. The downs of an angel are, are way better than the downs we experience. It's just like more or less happiness, not kind of the oof, that we go through here. Okay, cool. So angels, like it's kind of like it's daytime inside them when things are good. It's, so it's like a metaphor? Is that what you're saying? No. Uh, that doesn't because we're in the spiritual world it doesn't just affect their internal world their cycles affect the outer environment around them 
This is Heaven Hell 156. As the states of the inner levels of angels' love and wisdom change, so too do the states of the various things that surround them and are visible to their eyes. For the things that surround angels are given their appearance according to the things that are within them. That's what I mean when I say spiritual world is consciousness driven. So like when it's daytime inside an angel, when they have more spiritual warmth, which is love and spiritual light, which is truth, it's actually daytime around them. Like it gets brighter and warmer around them to match that. And as that stuff starts to wane, like the sun's starting to set. We are starting to move into evening. Literally, that's going on around you. So how did that work? That's kind of cool. Let's dig more into that. We have a chart. Oh, you don't have a chart at your house? That's all right. You can share my chart with me. We're going to talk about the angelic states of morning, noon, and evening. Angels go through cycles in their state of mind states of mind. Those, the inner cycles that they go through match exactly, correspond with the stages that happen during one of our days. What makes a day a day? How do you know that the day is starting or ending or that it's night? It has to do with light and heat. The quality of the light, how much light there is, and then is it warmer or colder? Generally, it's hotter in the day and colder at night. So for angels, the morning in an angel is when they're in a clear state of love. Love is spiritual warmth. A clear state of wisdom is noon. And wisdom is seeing how to put love into action. When they can, not just they're getting hyped about it, but they can execute on it, that's noon inside of an angel. When that wisdom and that drive start to wane, when it's getting less clear, that's evening inside them when that cycle has spent if you had no love or no wisdom at all then that's night actual night where there's none of either is not a state of heaven it's a state of hell heaven has something close to night but not quite technically night in the afterlife these inner stages of mind manifest as the time of day outside of angels so new cycle begins for an angel when they are starting to get fired up with love about something when they have a loving motivation that like this this new thing some new thing that's good some new um, acceptance of the divine love for the human race that's morning and then morning is experienced differently by the different kinds of angels in their relative position each you know natural spiritual celestial they all have different mornings when they have absorbed the, the first you feel like I got to do this but then it's like oh well I now I've started to learn how to do this now I'm going out and trying to make this a reality then we're advancing in our day till finally we hit peak readiness that's noon it's like I've got I know what I want to do and I know the mo I know exactly how to do this and they're going out and accomplishing some kind of useful stuff for the human race it's noon it's midday and as they go through that, eventually, even in heaven, you start to get to the end of the cycle and it starts to wane. I start to, like maybe I've run into some new problems or something, or I'm just getting exhausted. I don't know exactly how it works. And finally, as that starts to dry up, both the wisdom to move forward and even the energy to do so, then it's evening. And remember, literally, it would be like you'd see evening around you when you're there. You'd see the noon conditions around you. You'd see morning around you. Again, it doesn't get to be full night. There's some kind of like half, he says like twilight, like the light before dawn. I don't know if there's like, there's nautical twilight. There's these different distinctions when it sort of looks like night, but technically there's some light. I don't know. I would say something I know when I when people read Swedenborg and they hear there's no night in heaven everyone everyone is like but wait I like night <laughs> so I'm sure that there, there's stargazing in heaven but there's something different about the heavenly state that is close to night but not night and the hellish state of no love no wisdom so in heaven 
days aren't determined by the rotation of giant physical objects like they are here. It's not 24 hours. How long angels are feeling these different feelings, that's how long the day lasts. So you can have some days that are longer than others. You can have a, you know, a noon that lasts for quite a long time. You can have a morning that lasts for quite a long time. It goes with the processes that are going inside you instead of like, oh man, I want to keep writing this, but it's already lunchtime. The, the internal dictates the external there. And it can be different for different angels at different times. It can be different time of day for two angels that are right next to each other. And that seems a little weird, but there's like an analog for it on Earth. Right now, when I'm taping this, it's morning for me. For some people right now on this globe, it's the middle of the night. There's some people who it's evening. There's different time zones in the world, depending on location. In heaven, it's not depending on location, it's depending on state. So you can, if your noon lasts longer than someone else's, they get ahead of you, or you're in the opposite state of them. Swedenborg puts it like this. One angel may be in clarity and delight when another is in dimness and discomfort. Even at the same time, within the same community, it happens differently in one community than in another two, and in communities of the heavenly kingdom, different than in communities of the spiritual kingdom. So you can have, like, hey, we're, we're, all, we're all here. We all live together. We all sort of think similar. But for right now, like, I'm just mourning. I'm in mourning for a long time while, you know, you might be in noon and out and moving, and you might be in evening right now. Okay, well, hey, you're feeling evening state? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling the evening state. Let me help you out. I'm in mourning. Let me let me share some love and hope and stuff with you. That was my dramatic reenactment of that. Swedenborg described getting to see these changes of state, what it's like to watch them happen. This is what he said he saw and experienced. I saw the Lord as the sun, at first reddish and gleaming, so brilliant as to be beyond description. I was told that the Lord as the sun looks like this to angels in their first state. Later, I saw a great dim halo around the sun, because of which the reddish gleaming quality that made the sun so brilliant began to dim. I was told that the sun looks like this to them in their second state. Then I saw the halo become darker so that the sun seemed less ruddy step by step until finally it looked quite pale. I was told that the sun looks like this to them in their third state. After this, I saw that pale disk move to the left toward heaven's moon and add its light to the light of the moon so that the moon shone exceptionally brightly. I was told that this was the fourth state of people in the heavenly kingdom and the first state of people in the spiritual kingdom. And there's some, there's some complexity in that about the idea of the end state for a heavenly angel being the first state of a spiritual angel. We're not going to get into that here. But one thing that is really cool is that just like if you see, you know, see like a, usually it's a graphic of the globe turning and you see certain parts of it coming into light while their parts are in darkness. Um, there's sort of that happening in heaven. This is heaven and hell 159. I was also told that the changes of state in each kingdom proceed alternately, not throughout, but in one community after another. So like it's day, then it's day, then it's day. I was also told that these alternations are not fixed, but happen more or less swiftly without people being aware of it. So it could be, you know that, we have that here. It's like, oh, I've, I remember that one afternoon when we all went and we did this. It was so fun. It felt like it lasted forever. There you could really have like, hey, we're all, everybody's hyped. Everyone's doing something that we really love. And it, it we really spent a long time in this like en endless summer afternoon. It wouldn't feel like it drags on because it matches exactly the state of your enthusiasm for it. But it, it comes to completion. Like, ah, we had time to finish that. And then we move to the next thing. Angels went on to say that the sun in and of itself neither changes nor moves, but the things look the way they do because of the ongoing progressions of states in themselves. Since the Lord appears to each individual in keeping with that individual's state. Just like here, the sun is just sitting there being the sun. 
the earth turns away. Or if you're in the nor way up in the northern reaches of the globe, you have different angle of light than if you're right by the equator. The, the differences are in the individual. But why does that happen? Why keep this day night thing going? If it's heaven, wouldn't it always be, if, if like 9 a.m. is the perfect state to be in or, or something where there's a good balance of love and wisdom, why wouldn't everyone just stay in that state forever? Wouldn't that be better? Well, no, and no because of some reasons. As, as always is the case with Swedenborg stuff, there is a reason for why things happen the way that they happen. You know how kids are always like, why? 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 Well, they're onto something. We have a, we want to know why. There, there should be some reason why. This is the reasons for why the day-night cycle happens. Why that is better than it not happening. Why it would have a place in heaven. This is from Heaven and Hell 158. Let's go. I know how to draw. I have been told from heaven why changes of state like this occur. But why? Angels have said there are many reasons. Let's go. This is not just going to be writing. This is going to be counting. First, what's a good reason for this cycle to happen? First, the delight of life and of heaven that angels enjoy because of the love and wisdom given them by the Lord would gradually pall if they were constantly engaged in it. The way it happens for people who are involved in pleasures and enjoyments without variety. Variety, hmm, the power of, it's not just the spice of life, it's an inescapable fact of enjoying things. What's your favorite food? What's your, like, if you were going to have your 70th birthday, or you're going to have your 40th wedding anniversary, something really cool, and you're going to go have a dinner, just what special food would you treat yourself to? Now, if you had that every day for a month, you wouldn't care about it anymore. Except for I know in The Simpsons that one time they're like, uh, Homer, well, that he's a, he goes to hell and the devil's like, oh, you like donuts? Well, now you have to eat nothing except donuts. And he's like, okay, and just loves it. And the devil is flummoxed by that. You have to have, things cannot be fun if you always have them. There has to be cycles to things. A second reason, doing is that angels have a sense of self or self-image just as we do. And this involves loving themselves. Now the sense of self or self-image, that is, um, there's a Latin word. What, you don't think someone who looks like me would know a Latin? Well, I don't, I just know this word is proprium. And that, I don't think there's like a really clean English equivalent. It, I see it in the NCE. There's these footnotes that say it's your, everything that is your own. The way that Swedenborg uses it, I think that the closest modern pop concept we have to it is what we now call the ego. This is your self-identity. This is your, hey, I, there's me and then all of you guys. So loving yourself is really loving your ego. It's, it's more um, narcissism. I'm not going to try to write that out. More narcissism than self-esteem. So even angels have this tendency toward self-aggrandizement. All the people in heaven are kept free of their sense of self. And to the extent that the Lord does keep them free, they enjoy love and wisdom. Okay, so being away from that, not free from your sense of self, like you don't understand you're a separate person. Actually, Swedenborg makes this fascinating claim that the more, the more that you get into heaven, the more you are into this state where you realize that God is everything, the more you feel like distinctly like your own person. The two happen simultaneously. But what you don't have is this sense of like, I'm this independent thing and that I'm, it's me against you and that I'm hopefully gonna come out on top there. To the extent that they are not kept free, however, they are caught up in love for themselves. And since all of them do love that sense of self and carry it with them, these changes of state or successive alternations do occur. So that's why, that's why it drags down because eventually things are going well for angels and they can get a little bit, not like uglily so, but that they can have a little tinge of like, look at, look at me, look at how well I'm doing and that, 
destroys this delicate state of heaven or or degrades it enough that we need to go cycle. But it's not just, it's not like punitive. There's a, there's a constructive reason for it. A third reason, that's what I'm talking about, is that they are made more perfect in this way. More perfect in this way. Since they become accustomed to being kept in love for the Lord and kept free from love for themselves. It's like, oh, back in the gym. Get more, build up more strength to move out of this self-centered state and back into the state of heaven. Further, by these alternations of delight and discomfort, their perception of and sensitivity to what is good become more and more delicate. It expands your capacity to enjoy heaven, to be apart from heaven. This is the way it is with everything. The last weekend I got sick and when I was in that state, I was like, man, I love being not sick. <laughs> you understand what you have better and can enjoy it better. Swedenborg says this about what's it actually like for angels to be in the, their, their low state. When angels are in this last state, which is when they're involved in their sense of self, they begin to feel, not deeply, but begin to feel depressed. Now that's a modern term, it's a clinical, and that's not Swedenborg, there wasn't that back then, so it just means unhappy. I have talked with them when they were in this state and witnessed their depression. They kept saying, though, that they lived in hope that they would soon return to their earlier state and be in heaven again, so to speak since heaven for them is being kept free of their sense of self. So they don't want this, like, oh, I'm on an ego trip here. They don't want it. They're not, like, into it. They're like, I, this life is not nearly as good. I want to get back to that. I want to get back to that love for the whole human race. So the only reasons, all those four reasons just really are one reason. These cycles increase the happiness of angels overall. It makes it so that you start to want that heavenly state of mind more and more strongly because you've been without it for little bits. It's just like if you get a little bit sick, your immune system kicks up, which allows them when it gets back to the day, the next time they get back to day, that day is brighter and warmer because it allows them to absorb and adopt what comes from God more and more deeply into themselves. So it's like every day you move a little closer and closer to the equator. In conclusion, there's two kinds of day-night cycle. There's the physical, you know it. It's like the sun and the sun. But then there's also the spiritual, which happens inside each of us. We go through these same cycles we've been talking about with the angels, but in the spiritual world, what happens inside of you is happening outside as well. So in heaven, angels actually have a state of mourning that they go through which is when love is strong and it's motivating them. They have a state of noon that they go through, which is when wisdom makes everything clear and they can get out and do useful things. They have a state of evening and of twilight when those things are starting to fade and it's time to go and start again. Something to remember for yourself, since you are an angel in the making, is that you follow this same pattern. We, Since we understand and know the way that regular days work in the physical world, we don't panic when it's night. Oh no, that, like it's getting cold and dark. Is this is it going to be like this forever? No, the sun's going to come up again. So it goes in yourself. You might be thinking, I'm trying to do my spiritual growth thing and like I was doing really great and now I'm not doing so great. Yeah, okay. It's just, it's just evening. Like just don't worry. The sun's going to come back up again. You can start to watch this in yourself. I found this really helpful to realize, okay, when it's morning for me, there are certain things that I do. When it's noon for me, I'm gonna go out and do those things. But when it's starting to get to be the end of the day, it's okay to be resting. It's okay to be recuperating and not expect you're gonna have the energy or the clarity that you'd have in the morning or at noon. Just know every day is, is you're going up little bits. So even though you're on this cycle, you can still be moving more and more in the direction of heaven. And you can be living your days, not in according to the physical clock, but according to the spiritual clock, just like the angels do. So notice when it's morning, notice when it's noon, get out there and get done what needs to get done, and then take a break, and then we'll do it all again. Better and better, happier and happier each time. That's the, the variety of heaven. <laughs>